Uh, Oakley Doakley, our first step here is to graph accurately. So um, we just need, I mean, you could do this a couple of ways also. You could just plug and chug um, to get some data points and connect them because this is a linear uh, situation, supply and demand. Or you can establish the choke points, um, you know, figure out where the um, vertical intercept is, figure out where the horizontal intercept is for your demand curve. It feels like what might be most useful for this particular problem is to um, figure out the intercepts because we're going to need those to establish the boundaries of our triangles and whatnot that we'll be using later to calculate consumer and producer surplus. So for the demand curve, we would set the quantity demanded for zero to figure out what this price point is. And you find out that P equals four when quantity demanded is zero. And if you solve for the X intercept, horizontal intercept, you would set price equal to zero, right? Price goes to zero and we see what this number is. And that number is 6,000. So that's your demand curve. Doing the same sort of thing, um, setting our quantity demanded equal to zero gives us a choke point or the lowest price that suppliers will accept, or actually the price that's so low that none of them will no, will no longer offer any uh, supply, is at 0 0.5. And uh, supply doesn't have another sort of bound. There are There's no other intercept to find, uh, but you could just plug in any price. I'm gonna see, okay, I've got this point. Uh, now where's, what's the supply at a price of four? It's going to be 7,000. So there's your supply curve. And then the next step is kind of straightforward. Um, it's also a way to check our, to see if we did it correctly. We wanna know equilibrium price, quantity, consumer surplus, producer surplus um, before anything uh, else happens. Okay, so we wanna set them equal to each other. So we set the two equations equal to each other and we come up with a price of two. Then at, we just plug in that price to either the supplier demand equation, since they're equal at that price, we should come up with the same number either way, and we get quantity demanded is 3,000. Then we need to find producer and consumer surplus, basically the area of the red triangle and the area of the blue triangle. The um, width of that triangle of consumer surplus is 3,000 and the height is two. So your consumer surplus is 3,000. Looking for the producer surplus is the area of that blue triangle above the supply curve below the equilibrium price. The width of the triangle that we're looking for is 3,000. The height is one and a half, between two and 0.5. So your producer surplus is a little bit smaller at 2250. Okay, what's next? Uh, we need to figure out, okay, we've got a price ceiling of one fennig. So we wanna know what the producer surplus and consumer surplus after this price ceiling. Uh, there's some elements in here that look a lot like number eight. So if you haven't watched the number eight video, uh, that might help you here. Uh, and now we need to figure out that price uh, ceiling. So I forgot to graph this before. It's just a straight horizontal line at the price ceiling of one. So it's always a good idea to gut check and before you dive into any math, just go, okay, price is lower. So who hel who is helped and who is hurt? Um, who is helped obviously is consumers, although not all consumers, who is hurt is producers. Um, okay, so why are consumers, why are not all consumers helped? Because what happens is that if the price is artificially low, um, lower than it was before, and not legally allowed to go above it, some of your producers will stop producing. It's just they can't cover their costs, it's not worth it, whatever. And so you're gonna have a decline in, um, in quantity to 1,000. Why 1,000? Because that's where the supply curve intersects this new price, right? Um, if, if the price is that low, all of these suppliers, right, um, to the right here, it's not worth it for them. Their cost or their, their lowest price that they're willing to accept, their reserve price sometimes it's called, is gonna be above the actual price. So they make the choice not to produce that or not to sell it. 
So um, some consumers that want to buy this good will not be able to because there's only a few for sale. Okay, so let's remove all those ghosts from the old um, consumer and producer surplus. And let's go, okay, what is the new producer surplus? Hopefully it's clear to you that it's just that little tiny light blue triangle. Um, that's the new price and that's the supply curve. So um, producer surplus will be smaller. And consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve down to the price. So in your textbooks narrative, consumers get this whole amount here. More on that in just a second. I have a critique of that view, but um, that's what we're looking for, that area. And you can treat it as two distinct geometric areas, right? This triangle plus the rectangle below it. Easy peasy, you say. Oh, except we don't know exactly what this um, price point is, so we got to figure that out. To do and to do it right, let's just say, all right, what is the price at when quantity is a thousand? By now, you will have had hopefully enough practice plugging and chugging to know how to do that. And so we can just um, plug in quantity of a thousand right here, and we're going to get p equals $3.33333333. So we're looking for consumer surplus to be the area of the little triangle and that long, tall, skinny rectangle. Um, and it's half based on height, so half the base we know is a thousand wide, and the height of that little triangle is um, the difference between $4 and $3.33. And then we need to do the same thing for um, the area of the rectangle. And that is just um, base times height, or 1,000 times the height will be $3.33 minus 1. And depending on how far out you went with the decimal places, you're going to get something like 2665 or 66.